Good morning. Sharing our snow globes. While scrolling through Instagram, I recently watched a clip of comedian Mae Martin using the metaphor of a snow globe to describe all human interaction. All our thoughts, ideas, and experiences that help make up what we perceive as our identity are like novelty snow globes that we collect on our brain shelf to share with others. That all human action is basically taking turns sharing our snow globes. When someone is sharing their snow globe, we are trying to be good listeners. But we get distracted because the whole time they are sharing their snow globe, our eye is darting to our own shelf to see which snow globe we can share, waiting for the moment, and me as well. I live that experience every day. I aspire to be a good listener and very often fall short because I'm busy looking at my shelf for my own snow globe to share. And I've got almost 76 years of snow globes on my brain shelf. The practice, oh, the practice of deep listening challenges me to be mindful and present and receptive to whomever is sharing their snow globe, their thoughts, reflections, experiences, emotions, and vulnerabilities without looking at my snow globe shelf for an immediate response. It gives me the opportunity to suspend all judgment and give the speaker my undivided attention. Much like in meditation, where I note a thought, let it go, and come back to the breath, when I practice deep listening, I work at being present and receptive. I give my total attention and respect to the speaker. No questions, no comments, no opinions, no judgment, no suggestions just my total attention. The sweet thing about the process is that I will eventually get a turn to share my unique snow globe and get the same focused attention and respect from my group. Being heard in this manner has been a powerful, subtle way of showing me that I am loved and that I have value and that I am enough. When we have opportunities to practice deep listening, it is a way of reciprocating love and respect for each other. We are present and accepting of each unique sharing, each unique snow globe. What a precious gift. Amen. My name is Mary McClelland, and I am sensing a theme. <laughs> I have been a Unitarian Universalist my entire life. If you had met me at St. Mary's Parish taking my first Holy Communion, or seen me lady, later at Our Lady of Good Counsel Academy, you may have thought I was Catholic. But what I really was, was lost, feeling unseen and unheard, and a bit confused about how to be my whole self in this world. Some years ago, at age 53, I was newly on my own, and I needed a safe place to breathe. Finding Neighborhood UU Church in Pasadena, California was a step in the right direction. As I went through inquirers there and became a member, I began to find my place. Five years later, I was remarried and relocated here to McHenry. I came to Tree of Life's first in-person service as the pandemic was beginning to fade. Your joys and concerns ritual 
really surprised me. Neighborhood church was far too large for that kind of sharing. But here, I stepped up to the mic and I said, my joy today is that I have found tree of life. My concern is, have I found my people? Later in the service, Rev. Jen said, from this pulpit, Mary, the answer is yes. You have found your people. To be seen like that, to be called my name by the minister on my first visit was completely affirming. She had heard me. And what a gift that was. It's my spiritual life as a UU that requires me to bring my whole self to church, to committee meetings, to the potlucks, to my chalice circle. I am called to show up with all my untidy ideas and beliefs, bringing my whole self. And I am called to show up for others, to deeply listen to their lives. It's a circle. Deeply listening takes work. It is hard to simply be present and hear another's voice. It's not easy to keep my mind still and to not just be thinking of how to respond to what someone is saying. Often it takes some effort to tamp down my enthusiasm for the connectedness I feel with what the other person is saying. To listen deeply is sometimes the only thing I can do. When I have hurt someone, of course I can sincerely apologize and acknowledge my actions, but it is truly listening to their hurt and being present to their pain that begins the healing. And in listening, I realize that I am heard, I am seen, in listening to others with an open heart, I see myself and I know that I am not alone. When I put down my worries for a moment and just breathe in the same space with another person, I can give this gift of the circle. May it be so. There definitely is a theme. <laughs> Listening to life has been an important spiritual practice for me for quite some time. In fact, it's become such a regular part of my life that I often feel like life is a kind of companion rather than something that just happens to me. Does that sound odd? Most people have the experience of listening to the sounds of birds, the rain, the wind, the life sounds of nature. It really is not a huge step further to hear what's happening in our own individual life. By listening to the heart's response to our circumstances, to our experiences. We understand that we, when we listen to the sounds of nature, that when we listen to the, oh sorry, that when we value the sounds of nature, then we take time to notice them. And when we come to value that life is an unfolding experience within us, then we just make time and space to hear the meaning that the heart is holding from living such a life. Listening deeply to others is very much like listening to our own heart, 
our own lives because it points us to the one story that I mentioned earlier. We do have a beautiful hymn whose words actually say the same thing. When we tell our story from deep inside and we listen with a loving mind and we hear our voices in each other's words, then our heart is in a holy place. What changes would happen if we all started listening deeply? We might even begin with the conversations that we have during coffee hour today. Or maybe in this coming week, we might like to practice this loving gesture. Instead of just politely waiting for our chance to speak, instead of entering a conversation excited because we have important stuff to say, maybe we could approach the conversa our interactions with a little more kindness and generosity. The willingness to take the time to welcome and embrace the person who is speaking to us. Deep listening is an act of radical welcome. It's an expression of love. It's something that all of us can practice. And as we practice it, it moves us to healing the threads of our spiritual connection. May this be so. May we take part in making it so. Blessed be.